The New Orleans Saints and the New York Giants may be in diverging paths when it comes to the love of the fan base for their quarterbacks, but they're on the same path, a crash course to try to keep their playoff hopes alive this weekend. How are they going to get it done? We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody, and welcome into this Crossover Thursday edition, Locked On Giants and Locked On Saints, your daily podcasts covering the New York Giants and the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Big thank you to all the everydayers out there making Locked On Giants and Locked On Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, you can always subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss the latest episodes. Big shout out to all the everyday out there who are checking us out every single Monday through Friday. On this Crossover Thursday edition of the show, we've got Patricia Trainer at Patricia underscore Trainer on your favorite social media. Myself, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson, NOLA, N-O-L-A, on your favorite social media. Very grateful to be here to bring you a breakdown of this New Orleans Saints hosting the New York Giants game here on Sunday. And, of course, this Crossover Thursday edition of Locked on Giants and Locked on Saints brought to you by friends over at Prize picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Be sure you go check them out today over at prizepicks.com. So it's locked in NFL promo code locked in NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars on this crossover Thursday edition. We're going to be breaking down the things that each of these teams need to do to get a win as they fight to keep their playoff hopes alive. We're going to be taking a look at the biggest key matchups that can decide this game as well. And of course, get everything started with the biggest story for each of these games and Patricia or each of these teams. Um, I think I know where you're going with the biggest story because I think we're talking about a couple of passers for different reasons here, but I love the New York Giants side of this. What's the biggest story coming into this game for the boys in blue? For those of you who can't see it, I'm doing the Italian pinch. <laughs> hey, hey. Tommy Baby, <laughs> Tommy Cutlets. He's taking America by storm. He's certainly taking the New York, New Jersey area by storm. Tommy DeVito, undrafted free agent quarterback. He was supposed to be on the practice squad, supposed to be an afterthought. Injuries to Daniel Jones, injuries to Ty- Tyrod Taylor, thrust him into the spotlight. He had a rough start against Dallas in his very first NFL start, but he has won three in a row. He's going mm-hmm. for four in a row. And he can become the third rookie in the NFL with no interceptions and a passer rating of 100 or higher in four or more consecutive games, joining Dak Prescott of the Cowboys, who did it in 2016, and Russell Wilson, who did it in 2012. So Tommy DeVito, all eyes are going to be on him. Um, he was the darling on Monday Night Football. But you know what? As exciting as Tommy DeVito has been and how he has galvanized this New York Giants offense don't sleep on the defense either because the defense mm-hmm. is playing pretty well. You got Kayvon Thibodeau, who is looking to get his third in a row with a forced fumble, his fourth in a row with at least a half a sack. Bobby O'Karake, the inside linebacker, playing lights out. Deontay Banks, the rookie cornerback, oh. has a pass defense in six of his past seven games and is a- aiming for a third in a row uh, with a pass defense. So a lot to be excited for. If you're the New York Giants and oh, what what a, you know, a surge for the Giants, because it wasn't too long ago that it looked like this season was dead. Now there's a little bit of hope as the Giants try to keep their very slim playoff hopes alive. Yeah, that's huge. And uh, I got to say, Deontay Banks had an incredible Monday night football game. The poise, the composure, he needed all of it, and it was all there. Not bad for a dude his size playing that position. And, of course, the New Orleans Saints know a thing or two about good defensive back play. But we're going to get to that a little bit later here on the show. Uh, The biggest story for the New Orleans Saints comes down to the quarterback as well. But I got to tell you, the, the quarterback conversation over in New Orleans is very, very different than the Tommy Cutlet situation. There's love. There's galvanization. Everybody's rallying around the quarterback over in, New, in the Big Apple. Here in the Big Easy, it ain't so easy right now for Derek Carr, who has not had the season that folks have been waiting for. But I got to be honest. I, I do think that when it comes to Derek Carr, 
This is his prove it moment, right? These are the opportunities here. These last four games of the season, much like the New York Giants trying to keep their postseason hopes alive, Patricia, the New Orleans Saints trying to do the same. The good thing for the Saints is that they're in like the NFL's worst division in history right now that would rival the NFC Easts of the past. Uh, the NFC South right now has three first place teams, all six and seven. So not any of them very excited about their first place standing at the moment. But the New Orleans Saints do control their destiny. The two teams that they're tied with, they face later on in the season. They've got two NFC opponents coming up here, which becomes really important with tiebreakers and things like that common opponents all of that still ahead of them this game against the new york giants is a real opportunity for the new orleans saints to be able to keep their playoff hopes alive and maybe just maybe for Derek carr to i don't think it's going to change a lot of people's minds in terms of those who already have their minds made up but for folks that have been doubting Derek carr this game as well as the next three ahead are going to be huge for at least starting to lighten a little bit of the the, the weight that he is uh carrying so we got two quarterbacks here that are looking to prove something right yeah absolutely and you know what for saints fans who are looking for something to hang their hats on the superdome has been a house of horrors for the new york giants I think they are five and eight in that building since it opened up and back in, I want to say 70, was it 71 or 73, but they're five and eight. All right. They've had four games where they've just been absolutely blown out. We're talking 40 or more points. It's just been an absolute house of horrors. And who could forget 50, it was like 52, 49, a few what years an ago, game. you figure 49 points, game. the team should win. And no, oh, what happens? <laughs> the go and score 52 points and the Giants end up losing that game. That was kind of a funky game. I remember that one. Well, but uh, yeah, if you're looking for something, Saints fans to hang your hats on, know that that Superdome has been a house of horrors for the New York Giants. They did win the last time they were yeah, down the there. Thing. If I'm not mistaken, I think mm -hmm. that was that in overtime, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, that was overtime 27 yep. to 21 in 2021. That was so, my first know, ever credentialed football, my New Orleans Saints football game, by the way. Oh, a milestone <laughs> for you. So you'll remember it well. So there is, you know, there is that element and, you know, the, the Superdome, you know, in all seriousness, very hard place to play because of the fans, the noise, the sound, just everything about it. So, uh, you know, you've got that on top of everything else and, Nobody's sleeping on the Saints up here in New York. You know, they, they're saying all the right things. And, you know, they know that the Saints, as you pointed out, have something to play for um, in, in the, the uh, NFC South. So it should be a good game. Yeah, I, I think it will be. I really do think this is going to be yet another barn burner between these two teams. I mean, even even the 27 to 21 game, which isn't necessarily a barn burner by number standards, was a barn burner. I mean, we had big play after big play after big play. The former life of Kadarius Tony before he was lining up offsides on game winning plays and all these other things that he's off busy doing over in Kansas City. The big John Ross touchdown as well. We saw the battle with you know these these two teams, and it's always a ton of fun. It's always a little bit electrifying in in, in a way that's always uh, very, very fun to take in. I'm going to be very, very interested to your point about the Superdome to see if there's more black and gold or if there's more red, white, and blue in the Superdome for this one. Because uh, it, two weeks ago, Patricia, it was very, very blue when the Detroit Lions came to town. And I've already heard about a lot of people selling their tickets for better than face value. And I'll tell you what, not a lot of Saints fans are paying better for better than face value for tickets to come and see the New Orleans Saints play right now. So I imagine that those are Giants fans trying to come to the best city in the world. I don't blame them. I get it. I understand. But I I'm going to be real interested to see what the Superdome looks like on Sunday. As am I, you know, because look, New Orleans is one of the uh, the, the the must visit cities on the mm -hmm. Giants' schedule this year. I mean, that's that's a city. You know, if I wasn't just getting over COVID, I'd be down there. I would make <laughs> that. I would make a rare trip down there because it's just a place to be. You know, and and I do think there's going to be a large contingency of Giant fans down there. Certainly, the Devitos, I'm sure, will be heading down there. Hey, as their, long as they're hosting a tailgate, we're good. We're good. Uh, yeah, get ready. I mean, come hungry. <laughs> You'll have cutlets, ziti, uh, eggplant, parmesan, all kinds of good stuff. But, uh, but seriously, though, I mean, the Giant fans, they do travel well. They do support the team. And, again, with the Giants having something to play for, mm -hmm. even though it's slim, even though the odds of them making the playoffs are, are you know, Less than I think one. Actually, they're a little more than one percent mm -hmm. as of this this uh, recording. It's something to hang your hat on, and we, and and this season, like I said, the Giant fans haven't really had much to get excited about. Now they do, and it's just been really good to see 
a lot more smiles on a Monday as opposed to people claiming the sky is falling. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Hey, look, two teams looking to prove something here. So it is going to be a fun game for sure. Patricia, let's break down some of the matchups that can end up deciding this game. And I'll tell you what, a lot of it comes down to this New Orleans Saints defense and that New York Giants offense. We're going to be breaking that down as we continue on here with this crossover Thursday edition of Locked on Giants and Locked on Saints here on the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. In today's episode of Locked on Giants and Locked on Saints, brought to you by Better Help. Better Help Therapy Online has been massive for me. Look, I've, I'll be completely transparent with you. I have been using Better Help for my therapy purposes, therapy needs since, let's call it the, the great pause, if you will. Uh, but since 2020, that was a big time to where a lot of us started having those conversations about mental health. I come from a background where there's a big time stigma about talking about mental health, a negative one, one that makes you want to stay away from it. Took a lot to get over that. BetterHelp was a big reason why I was able to be able to get matched up with a licensed therapist that was able to help me out, that was matched to me based on a questionnaire that I filled out, the freedom to change in case there wasn't a good fit there as well at no additional charge. And of course, the ability to be able to do everything from the comfort of my own home, whether it's a video call, a phone call, or even just like typing messages back and forth. If you're somebody that's been looking and maybe pondering therapy, especially with the holiday season here, Better help should absolutely be a part of your plan. So in this season, uh, think about giving yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp.com, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. All right, everybody, continuing on with this crossover Thursday edition, the one, the only, the wonderful Patricia Trader of Locked on Giants and myself, Ross Jackson of Locked on Saints. I told y'all on Wednesday's episode, you know, you, you locked on Saints uh, every day is that I love Patricia. So I'm very excited that we get to do this show together. Patricia, I always love when the Giants are on the schedule for the Saints because I love talking football with you because you got one of those very, very bright football minds, one of the best in the business. So Give us a little bit of that. Give us a little bit of that knowledge when you're talking about those key matchups that could potentially decide this game between the Saints and the Giants. Please, please. Just of a little course. Bit. <laughs> well, how can I say no to you? Seriously, <laughs> I love talking with Ross too. For those of you who don't know, I, I, Ross is just one of one of my many favorites to talk football with. He because he's just so good. But then again, you the Locked On Saints listeners, you guys know that. So yeah, uh, they're tired of me by now. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So, you know, in terms of a key matchup, I'm looking Giants offensive line versus the Saints defensive front. So you're probably saying to yourself, well, duh, it all starts <laughs> up in the trenches. But here's the thing that I, I've seen with, with the Saints. They deploy a lot of stunts. They are very – they use a lot of trickery. The Giants offensive line, you know, I'd like to say the first time – the next time they pick up a stunt will be the first time – but I have some numbers for you. The Giants this season, according to Pro Football Focus, have faced stunts on 3.7% of their snaps. Doesn't sound like a lot, but their EPA per play is a league worse, minus 3.344. And they've had a success rate of just 35% against stunts. Mm. So you've got a rookie center, John Michael Schmitz. He's not really a rookie anymore. I think at this point in, in, yeah. in the year, you say they're not really rookies, but still. He's in his first year. You know, you're, you've got your interior offensive linemen. You know, communication is key. Now, the Giants offensive line, they have performed better of late. Last year, last week, excuse me, was the first time this season the Giants did not allow a sack. Mm. I know, right? Wow. 29th ranked offensive line per pro football focus in terms of pass blocking efficiency rating. They didn't allow a sack. Part of that was a result of the Giants getting the ball out of Tommy DeVito's hand quicker. So that mm -hmm. that uh, played into it. Tommy DeVito also learning to roll in, around in the pocket and navigate away from trouble. But that being said, the Saints defense, they use a lot of trickery. I suspect they're going to throw a few, you know, twists and stunts and oh, yeah. shouts and whatever twists and <laughs> shouts, right? Um, French twists. Yes, our French twists as we were talking about beforehand. <laughs> exactly. So I think it's going to be important for the Giants to pick that up because, you know, communication's key. They're expecting the same starting offensive line that they had, you know, the last few weeks. Evan Neal is not going to be ready, I don't think, for, for this this week. 
So that means you're going to have Tyree Phillips and Andrew Thomas on the edges. John Michael Schmitz, as I mentioned, he's going to be the center. Justin Pugh uh, at guard. And, um, you know, so the Giants are going to be have to pick up those stunts. And, you know, yeah. we'll see how often the Saints throw them at them. But that's a big concern of mine. Yeah, I think that's huge. And look, this is a part of what, you know, locked on Saints every day is know is is that like the Saints have been trying to get this pass rush going. And a lot of it has been about no longer doing just kind of this heads up four man rush. They're implementing guys like there's a, a, a smaller linebacker, Zach Bond, who had 12 and a half sacks his you know final year at Wisconsin before he was drafted back in 2020. He's finally now getting his opportunities to be a pass rusher as opposed to being trying to kind of remold it into an off ball linebacker. A failed experiment is now turning into and showing you a little bit of like, okay, this is what this guy should have been drafted to do and asked to do all along. He's been able to contribute quite a bit. He's got a more slender frame, just over six foot two, six Six foot three, 225 pounds. So he's not a guy that's going to put his hand in the dirt and try to come after the tackle. You got to do some things to get him running, right? So those stunts, those twists absolutely help with that. Lining him up in the wide nine, far outside the tight end, letting him get the running start, all those things. Dip the shoulder, ghost moves, all those types of deals. And he has been vital for the New Orleans Saints when he's been on the field against running quarterbacks, something that the Saints have struggled against. Tommy DeVito, 10 rushes for over 70 yards just this past game against the Green Bay Packers big part of his game and his ability to escape as well. So I'm with you hundred percent. That is a humongous matchup between the saints and the giants is there on the trenches. The other one that I'm looking for goes back to the Saints secondary. Look, there's not a lot of consistently good parts about the new Orleans saints season so far this year. The run game has been up and down, mostly down. The passing game has been up and down the, uh, offensive line has struggled in pass protection. The defensive line has struggled to put pressure on quarterbacks. The linebackers have struggled to cover, but that secondary has contributed the majority of the 22 interceptions that the Saints have so far. The two starting corners, even with Marshawn Lattimore, their usual star corner who they drafted back in 2017, has been an all-pro, former defensive rookie of the year, all that kind of stuff. He's on injured reserve right now, can't come back until after this game. So the two starters on the outside, Paul Sinadibo, who they drafted just a few years ago, he's now in his third season. And Isaac Yadam, a guy that has been a bit of a journeyman in the NFL, landed here in New Orleans, says that it feels like home for him, and he certainly played like it. Both of those corners ranked in the top 10 of pro football focuses past coverage grade. But even if you don't believe in the grades, you can look at the raw numbers. Uh, right now, you've got Isaac Yadam out of all corners, 119 corners who have played at least 150 snaps of coverage so far this season. He is top of the NFL right now in forcing completion percentage at 35. And in Paul Sinadivo sits comfortably within the top five of that same metric at 22%. So even in the <clears> raw <throat> metrics, that's what those guys do. The reason why they're so important to me is because so far, the New York Giants have not been attacking the middle of the field. One of the league's lowest, 14% of their targets going to the middle of the field, according to NFL, L, NFL ELO and their you know fantastic metrics over there. They love the perimeter in both the passing game and in the run game. 41% of their runs going around the ends. Perimeter defense for these corners is going to be big, not just in pass coverage, but being able to tackle or redirect runners to the middle of the field into some congestion, something that the Saints have – been up and down about they give up the sideline a little bit too much in the run game this game they cannot do that with Saquon Barkley no I mean Saquon is at his best when you get him you know on those stretch runs he's had mm -hmm. a lot of success this season with those stretch runs you know earlier in the year they were trying to send him up the gut really not getting a push there you got to take advantage of him and you know speaking of Saquon Barkley they've been incorporating him a little bit more in the passing game. I you know, know we saw that a couple weeks ago uh <laughs> where he had some success but you know to your point about the the Giants passing game you know they've been getting Wandale Robinson the their yeah. second year uh receiver he had a big game against the Packers just running those outside routes. You know we we saw Isaiah Hodgins would kind of been an afterthought this season. Um he had a big touchdown catch. Jalen Hyatt, the rookie, oh, watch him. out for him because he can stretch the field. So, you know, it's interesting because when DeVito first started, a lot of the Giants passing game seemed to be more deep ball or nothing. And mm, they kind mm -hmm. of, you know, curled it back a little bit. But the capability is there if they can get the protection lined up 
and set up. And just a quick note on Isaac mm-hmm. Yadam, former New York Giants cornerback. That's right, right. That's right. Of course. Of course. That was a part of his uh, his journey. He played a yes. bunch of different teams. You'll be happy to know. Landed here in New Orleans. Was fantastic as a gunner on special teams and has taken off big time as a cornerback in this very man-heavy system, man-coverage-heavy system. It's working for him. It's working for him big time. So maybe he's got some of those little inside trader secrets, too, that he might be able to offload a little bit. Probably not. It's, it's been a little bit, <laughs> been a little bit too long. Been a little bit too long. <laughs> yeah. for sure but it'll be fun to see him uh get, maybe get to reunite a little bit and see some sure. um coming up next we're going to take a look at what it is the new york giants and the new orleans saints need to do if each of these teams wants to get a win we broke down some of the things that have to happen on the defensive side for the saints the offensive side for the uh new york giants there's gonna be a little bit of that but obviously the saints on the offensive side and the giants on the defensive side are gonna have to get some things done too so we're gonna break down all of that as we continue on and wrap up this crossover thursday edition of locked on giants and locked on saints put a lot on podcast Network your team every day. And this wonderful crossover Thursday edition of Locked on Giants and Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. I think FanDuel is absolutely nuts this week having the New Orleans Saints favored by six points against the New York Giants. Listen, I have faith in the New Orleans Saints and their ability to be able to maybe string something together here, build some momentum, all those other things. I'm not ruling them out of this game entirely, but a near touchdown favorite? I don't think so. So maybe this is an opportunity for you to jump in and maybe win a little bit against the spread, perhaps. Maybe you think that the Saints are going to win, but maybe it's a five-point victory, a six, uh, you know, a four-point victory, something like that. Or perhaps you think that the Saints or Giants are just going to clean up and win this game outright. And if you're a first-time user of FanDuel, that's exactly the mentality you need to be able to take advantage of their new promo. New customers over at FanDuel are going to get $150 in bonus bets by winning any $5 money line bet. $150 if your team wins. It's like immediate 30 to 1 odds on a heavy favorite or an upset that you just guarantee is going to happen. So don't wait. Go and check them out today. FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, everybody, wrap it up. This crossover Thursday edition, Locked on Giants and Locked on Saints. Big thank you to all the everydayers out there for making us your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out that Locked on Sports Today YouTube stream as well. The world's first national sports 24-7 YouTube stream there, breaking it all down with the local experts that know your favorite teams better than anybody else. Go and check them out today at Locked on Sports today. Patricia, what is it that the New York Giants need to do to win this game against the New Orleans Saints? What they got to get done? Well, I mentioned it at the, earlier in the program, but I'll reiterate it. They have got to quiet down that mm. Superdome crowd. Mm-hmm. And that has been a struggle for the New York Giants starting fast. The Giants this season have been outscored 71 to 16 in first quarter of their games this year. They have Uh, I believe just one touchdown that they have scored that came on November 19th at Washington. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, They are two and six in games played this season in which they trail after the first quarter. They cannot under any circumstances, let the saints get out in front of them big time to where now they are in a hole. And the reason is very simple. You get behind. Now you're out of your game plan. Now you got to maybe pass a little bit more, abandon the Mm -hmm. run which is your strength. So the Giants have got to stay toe-to-toe, ideally force either a scoreless tie or take the lead so that they don't get dictated to as to what they need to do to win this game. Now, you know, again, the Superdome, the crowd is very boisterous. It's very loud down there. I think that's one of the two stadiums I've ever been to where I've actually had to put earplugs in. (laughs) To sit there, yeah, it gets a little rowdy. (laughs) A little bit, yeah. I mean, well, listen, they love their football down there, so Uh can't blame them. So, you know, that's going to be another factor as well. The noise factor, you know, the Giants probably going to have to go to a silent count. So, you got to be wary of mistakes, you know, jumping off sides, false starts, all that kind of stuff that can happen when you have a boisterous crowd. So, that's why it is so important for the Giants to get off to a fast start, quiet down that crowd. 
and just take control of the game and don't lose sight of what your game plan is. Yeah, and based upon what the Superdome crowd has been here recently too, a fast start like that, if the Saints can't match it, not only will the Superdome be loud, but they'll turn on this New Orleans Saints team real quick and you'll hear the Boo Birds come out to start to impact the home team instead of the New York Giants team. So you could feel that maybe compounding a little bit uh, in favor of the New York Giants if that were to happen. For sure. So that's 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 a fantastic one. Uh, the New Orleans Saints, by the way, have not scored an opening drive touchdown so far at all this season, and they haven't had a field goal even in the opening drive. They haven't scored in the opening drive for about 10 or 11 games so far this season either. So they have struggled to uh, be able to put up points in the first quarter. And so that that first quarter split that you just heard uh, that Patricia just mentioned, that's going to be big for the Saints too because that's going to mean bucking a trend for them because usually they're the ones getting outscored in the first quarter, at least the majority of the season here. I think for me, Patricia, the thing that I look at for the Saints is that they have to be able to, on the offensive side, take advantage of some of the poor tackling that we've seen on the Giants' defense. I know yards after catch has been a bit of a bugaboo for them so far. I believe that they're uh, near the top of the NFL in yards after catch allowed uh, in the league. The Saints don't benefit a ton from yards after catch, but they got to change that this weekend. They've started to get a little bit better at it here recently. They do it by scheming players open to where they're catching things in stride and having green grass around them. Chris Olave's mentality has changed a lot over the course of this year. Their star wide receiver with their other star wide receiver, Michael Thomas, still an injured reserve. He's done a very good job here recently of catching passes, getting upfield and working to pick up more yards. He's on the injury report right now. We didn't see him out at practice on Wednesday with an ankle injury, but hopefully he'll be back out there uh, this weekend because that's a massive part of the New Orleans Saints offense. But look for Alvin Kamara, the star running back, to get involved, especially with that yards after catch asset part of the game. But the main thing that I'm looking at for this New Orleans Saints team does go back to their defense a little bit, and it's getting turnovers and then back to the offensive side, scoring off of those turnovers. The Saints have done a good job taking the ball away so far, 22 takeaways so far this season near the top of the NFL in that, in that number. Uh, but scoring off of turnovers has been a bit of a, tr have, has been a bit of an issue for them when they do get it done. They're six and O oh, they're six and O oh, when they score points off of the turnovers or takeaways that they generate, that's all six of their wins. They are 0-7 when they don't score off those turnovers or in the two games they didn't force a turnover. That's all seven of their wins. Their entire season has been based on being able to or lacking the ability to play complementary football. That's going to be big yet again this weekend against the Giants. Well, I know it's the holiday season, but the Giants haven't been turning <laughs> the, the ball over since yeah. Tommy Cutlets came into the to the picture. He takes care of that his, thing. His ball security has been pristine. No interceptions, no fumbles. Um, you know, obviously the Giants, they had some if Saquon fumbled uh, in, in the Monday night right. game, but the quarterback, you know, it, it, if you're looking for a turnover, obviously you're going to look for the quarterback to maybe commit a mistake or something like that. And knock on wood, if you're the giant, a giant fan, that Tommy Cutlets keeps it, you know, keeps that streak alive. And, you know, Saquon, I know he, he was really, you know, beside himself for losing that fumble. Fortunately, it didn't cost him the game, but you can't have that, obviously, um, going forward. So that's going to be a big thing. I'm sure the, sh the uh, Saints are going to come after the Giants, try to poke the ball out, oh, knock yeah. it out, you know, jump routes and all that stuff. The Giants got to be sharp in their, their preparation and, and also what they're doing in terms of their technique. Yeah. Along with the interceptions, the saints have been uh, very ast astute, astute, astute. Yes. Astute with their, their top down punch outs, things like that. They've done a good job of maintaining that mentality, not always knocking the ball loose, but you can see them going after it. They have the mentality of a takeaway team. We'll see if they're going to be able to capitalize uh, on it as they, they continue to move forward. For certain, I will say this, and this is really more a funny story than anything else. The Saints have faced one other rookie quarterback who hadn't turned the ball over, or thrown an interception until they played against him. That was C.J. Stroud earlier this season, and they picked him off in that game. Now, the more relevant part of that is that they picked him off during that game, gave him his first career interception, but on the return, Zach Bond, who picked it off, the linebacker I was talking about earlier, fumbled it and gave it right back to Houston. They gained two yards. Not relevant, all right? Now what we're talking about, you can't do those. You got to hold on to the football. You got to score afterwards. Patricia, if you're going to give a prediction for this game, how do you see this one working out? 
Oh, gosh. Uh, you know what? I've been picking against the Giants. I've been taking one for the team. You know, I know my, my listeners are like, you're picking against the Giants again. You're always negative. <laughs> I'm picking one for the team, guys. There All you right? go. I'm, I'm going to give this one to the Saints. Um, I'm going to say 27-21. Yeah, all right. It would be it would be the the reverse of last of the last time that the two teams played. I think Saints fans would more than certainly take that. Let's do it in four quarters, though, not overtime, please. Like let's 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 not let's not prolong this this game. And let's not have a have blowout to. like we've had in the past. Yeah, yeah. I do think this is gonna look. I, I think this is gonna be a higher scoring game than maybe maybe a you know a Saints and Giants game. Or, or or let me say it this way: I think this is gonna be a higher scoring game than any other teams that you might look at at six and seven and five and eight going against one another, right? Like, I think this is going to have a lot more action than maybe what that game otherwise would look like blindly. Um, I'm going to take, I'm going to take, I, I've been doing the same thing. I've been picking against the saints basically for a long time so far this season, probably for the first time in a while, I'm going to take the saints in this one. Uh, I'm going to give this to them. Um, and I think it's going to be something like, I was thinking like 30 to 27. Like, I really think these two teams are going to come out here and, and duke it out because they have a lot to play for. They have a lot to prove. And these two quarterbacks have a lot to prove too. And you know how sometimes that can go when you got two quarterbacks that are ready and raring to go. That brings us back to, fit, to, to 52 to 49. I don't think we're getting all that. I don't think we're getting all that. But I do think we're going to have a pretty fun game here uh, on our hands between the Saints and the Giants. Let's hope so. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hey, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there's, a, there's a hand gesture that Saints fans uh, use for Derek Carr, too, but I don't think we can do that here on the show. No, this uh, is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. This was a ton of fun. If you want to hear more about the Giants, whether you're a Locked On Giants every day or, or you're a Locked On Saints every day or you want to get a better perspective of what's going on with the Giants, make sure you go and check out Patricia over at Locked On Giants. Giants fans, Saints fans that want to hear more about about the Saints in their game and the way that they might approach this one, come and check out Locked on Saints as well. We'll have it all uh, ready for you here as we continue on every Monday through Friday on Locked on Giants and Locked on Saints. Patricia, absolute pleasure. Thank you, Ross.